What you guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how to turn your office computer into a gaming PC. So we're going to take a look at upgrading this Acer Aspire XC885. And uh, this is based as an office PC basically, but you can convert them and do quite a few upgrades. I've got this for £150, which is quite a bargain because it does have an i5-9400 in it, which means we can now upgrade this to Windows 11 at a future date. You can see we do have Type-C uh, connector in the front here. It does have memory card reader, USB, and your audio inputs in the front here. Also, you have your power button here and an expansion port for a DVD ROM drive if you want to add one of them to this particular little case. Now you can see here this does have a proprietary power supply in it, and I'll talk about proprietary stuff a little bit later on. But this is the back of it here. So these are classed as small form factor PCs. They're quite popular and people like to buy them because you can use them for Plex servers and, and file sharing servers and other things like that. So on the back here, we've got a VGA and also a couple of HDMI ports. And uh, we also have uh, some USB ports on the back here, Ethernet port and audio. So let me take the side panel off and we're going to take a look inside and we're going to upgrade some of the features on here. Now, this one didn't come with any hard drives uh, because the owner has removed those but we're going to upgrade this and put some modern day hardware in here so let's go ahead and get the side panel off so if you bought one of these and you're interested in buying one of these you can see it's got a big ventilation system on the side here no fan so we're going to add a fan to that later on i'll tell you why but have a look inside here very small as you can see here not much room in here and uh, the power supply is only 220 watts now, because it's proprietary, it means that they don't offer any third party options. And that means you're restricted to what you can actually put in there. You will have to start drilling holes to get it to mount another type of power supply, which will allow you to put a bigger card in here. So inside here, you can see there's only one fan header on the board here. It's not proprietary fan headers. It does have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. It does have eight gigabytes of RAM, only two uh, slots for your RAM. So I'm going to put some more RAM in here. Also going to remove this hard drive uh, cage here. So let's go ahead and remove this. It just comes off like this. Very simple. So I'm going to remove the screws and remove this. Now this does hold a three and a half inch drive, which would be your me big mechanical drives. And then it also holds a solid state drive area here, which is your two and a half inch. And it also allows you to hold a uh, Blu-ray drive in here if you wanted to add that in. Now you have to remember that when you're adding stuff into these little machines that you have to take into account the power supply is only 220 watts now we'll also be adding a gpu or graphics card to this little case these are low profile gpus the best low profile gpu you can buy today is a 1650 uh, which is quite a nice card pretty expensive in today's uh, market it's 220 pounds Personally, I think it's going to be a little bit too much for this little system because that's going to require at least a 300 to 350 watt power supply. And this is only a 220 watt. Now, there's a possibility that it would still work and you'll still be able to use it for a while. But that also puts a lot of strain on the power supply. And as a technician, I would never recommend that you push your limits to your power supply like that because they can catch fire and also they can let go and take all the parts with it. So I definitely don't want to be doing that. And I certainly won't be selling it on with that particular uh, card in it with that small power supply. It's just too much of a risk and a fire hazard. You can see we do have an M.2 slot on here for an NVMe drive, which I'll be putting in. You can see this is the hard drive cage here. As I've said, it does take the three and a half inch mechanical drive it also takes the blu-ray drive here slimline one and it also gives you room for a, a ssd in here as well and you could probably even mount one on the top here there's one here that you can put but how much storage do you need you could easily turn this into a plex server or file sharing server or whatever you want as long as you don't overload uh, the power supply too much you can see here there's a blank here for the blu-ray slot here we're not going to be putting one of those in today. I'll probably leave the cage out of this for the time being. We've got a couple of uh, SATA connectors here and there's three SATA ports on the board as well. That's it. That's all there is. So 
you're limited to what you can actually do here uh, with this particular sort of small build with that 220 watt power supply so bear all that in mind if you are looking to buy one of these got a wi-fi and blue bluetooth here i think there's a little um m.2 underneath there which takes sata as well not 100 percent sure so you can see this proprietary power supply here you have to find one with this connector on here and you won't find one online so if you're buying one of these with the hopes of upgrading the power supply you will have to modify it you can see the screw layout here as this triangle effect and this means it's not a standard layout either so and you can't get any third party power supplies for this there is a 350 watt power supply that will actually fit these dimensions but the screws don't fit so you'd have to re-drill or rivet them in and then you can put a 1650 inside here low profile one so i'm going to be putting this crucial nvme drive in this build which i think will add a new lease of life to this system it's not an old system it is an i5 uh, 9400 which is quite a nice little chip uh, for this little build there's no airflow in here so i will be uh, you know adding a fan on here on the side i'm not sure if it's meant to have a fan on the side but when i did it massively reduced temperatures inside of this little uh, build here and i'll be blowing air into uh, this system now we have the little drive here so let's get it out and we're going to mount this in and i will need to screw the screw down so if you don't have the screw then you will need to get one of these screws i've got tons of little screws so that's not a problem let's go ahead and get the little screw out and we can screw this down and this is going to add a massive performance boost to this little pc with an i5 uh, 9400 which is a ninth gen with an nvme drive and we're going to have uh, you know probably a, add a 16 gig stick to this and it's going to give us 24 gigs this is going to be a nice little system i'm also going to be putting a gtx 1030 in here which only requires 250 watts which should be okay for this system to handle so let's go ahead and move on to the next step which is adding in some ram now i had some ram available already from a previous project so it's not the same identical ram but it is a 16 gig stick uh, which i'll probably use for this particular build so it's a bit of a mix and match but it should be okay i could remove the 8 gig and just have one stick of 16 gigs but i want to keep it as a a dual channel sort of setup here so let's go ahead and put this in and this should have much more better performance for this so let's move uh, these cables out of the way and again the little mini pcs are very very popular and if you look online they're pretty expensive these little mini pcs to buy in the first place so this one was an absolute bargain which i snagged this for so if you're looking to get something like this have a good look at them because they're they're well worth looking at the dell optiplexes are a little bit more complicated with their proprietary set out where this one is a lot more user friendly when it comes to proprietary sort of stuff apart from the power supply of course so let's move these cables out the way and i'll tidy these up a little bit later on and what we're going to do here next is add in the gpu and we can then do some testing and see what sort of performance we get out of this little system and what we're going to do here is put in a graphics card i went with this one the msi uh, geforce gt 1030 now remember if you're getting the gt 1030s make sure you get the gddr5 versions not the old ddr3 and the old ddr4s this is a two gig card it's low profile it's an overclock edition and it will perform pretty well now the reason why i say that is because you will see a massive uh, frame rate improvement by using the gddr5 version over the previous ddr4 or ddr3 versions there's plenty of those available online avoid them like the plague and go with the gddr5 so this is the card here uh, it's passively cooled which means which means it's going to have a heat sink on it and no fan now also you can get these for 75 pounds uh, used just do your research they do have a proprietary bracket on them so when you buy these make sure that it has a small bracket with it otherwise you're going to be stuck with a larger bracket which is going to be no good here it comes with this little bracket here if it doesn't have a little bracket with it you're not going to be able to find that little bracket online because it is proprietary 
But like I said, you can get these for £75, which is an absolute bargain for something like this. It should run absolutely silent, and also it should give pretty good performance if you get the GDDR5 version. So I'm just removing this actual bracket here, and I've noticed one of the screws here is in a really peculiar position here where you can't get the screwdriver to. So they probably want me to remove the heatsink to remove this bracket system on here, which is a bit of a pain. You can see you can't get a screwdriver in there. So whoever designed that needs sacking because it's not that great. Anyway, I managed to get the little bracket on. I'm just going to tighten this screw down now. And uh, I did manage to get the screw out without uh, removing the heat sink. I actually pushed it over a bit and I did manage to get it off. Now, the good thing about these cards is no one really buys them too much. And this one's in pretty good nick. So I'm going to be putting this into the system here. Now, it does come all the way down to the bottom near the case. So it's quite a fat card for a low profile. And again, the best card you can get for a low profile is the uh, 1650 which will probably be a little bit too much for this power supply 1050 ti might be a bit of a push because that's now 300 watts that it requires this one only requires uh, 250 i think so should be okay so screw this down and we can move on to giving this a little test to see how it performs now if i put the hard drive uh, cage back in here I could literally load this up with a few drives if I wanted to and turn this into a nice little Plex server or what file sharing server or whatever it is you want to do in your home uh, you can even drop Linux on here and have it as a nice little Linux system I'm pretty sure it will fly with Linux on it and again it's a pretty powerful little PC it's got an i5 9400 with that NVMe drive on here and now a 1030 in here and 24 gigs of DDR4 RAM, uh, pretty nice. Now I did add an actual fan on the side here after doing my initial testing without the fan because the temperatures were getting a little bit toasty in some areas, but I did find a little fault that I had to fix, which I'll make a separate video on, on fixing uh, the temperatures of the NVMe drive, which were running at 110 Celsius, believe it or not, when I was running a benchmark. But there is a fix for it, and I'll show you it in a separate video. So I'm going to put the side panel on, and I'm going to do my testing, but I didn't do it with the fan on the side. So bear that in mind, and the temps were a little high on some of the games that I did on here because of the problems I had. But I have rectified those now, and they are running super cool and super nice. So let's go ahead and give you some of the benchmark scores. Now I run this test again and I actually got 780 uh, score and it says 652 um, and that's due to the GPU here. So we've got the, this is for the GPU, but it will play games like Grand Theft Auto and other games like The Witcher and things like that as well, which I'll show you some games that we can test on here. So I did a benchmark on the uh, NVMe drive here and that's the score I got here. And I'm pretty sure I can improve this with the fix after what I've done with the actual uh, NVMe drive here. So this is the 4, I think it's called, or something like that. And this is running at 1080p. So I've not downgraded to 720p. This is 1080p gaming, and that's exactly what I want to show you here, whether it can handle 1080p. It's really silky smooth. There's no jerkiness here at all. Now you can see the temperature on the GPU up the top there, 70 Celsius up the top. That was before I added a fan to the side of the case, which dropped the temperatures down to 51 Celsius, which I think is pretty good. And that's because it was blowing cold air over the CPU, the NVMe drive, and also over the GPU. Now you can see here, this was on 9, uh, 1920 by 1080 and all high settings as well on Counter-Strike Go. And you can tweak that as well. You can turn some settings. anti aliasing all that was on. It was uh, running really smooth. So pretty impressed with its performance, especially for a little PC. And this is something you can actually buy today. You can actually build these because you can get these cards. They're freely available. So if you're looking for a little system just to play some light gaming, 
then something like this will be ideal. You can play retro games on here, which I'll make another video showing you about retro games. This is Grand Theft Auto uh, 1080p. And you can see here getting really good frame rates. Now you can see the temperature has gone up quite a bit. And this is because I hadn't done that fan on the side, which give me really cool temperatures. And I'll show you that in a bit where I added the fan just to add a bit more cooling to this because it was there was no cooling inside the PC at all. So I wanted to bring that down a fair bit. And I'm pretty impressed by the performance of this little system. It really is a lovely little system and uh, performs pretty well. If you want to see more on this little system, then let me know in the comments section below and I can do some more testing. But this is the fan I added on the side. Yes, it's a little bit crooked. Don't worry, I did straighten it. But by adding this intake fan, it dramatically dropped the temperatures on this little system by quite a fair bit. So pretty impressed. And uh, yeah, it's probably not supposed to have a fan there. But you know what? I don't know why they didn't add a fan there in the first place because it does work. Anyway, I hope this one helps you out. If you're looking to buy yourself a little small form factor PC and you want to upgrade it, that's basically how you can do it with this Acer Aspire. My name is Ben Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. Have a lovely weekend and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now.